Thank you for turning our way today. I'm so glad that you have. I want to look at the issue of how it is that God works together with all things for good for those that love him. How is it that God works all things for good? And I'll talk to you about that a little later. I've got an interesting guest for you to meet. I want to, to present some wonderful singers. Here's a couple of letters that have come in during the week. One from J.V. Bassett of Kuroi in Queensland. Dear Dr. Moyes, my husband and I enjoy your programs every week. We're unable to go to church services so we receive spiritual help from your messages thanks to all of you who write and in particular people who are shut in like that another letter from Cobden in Victoria from IH Tennant may God continue to bless the work that you're doing and we wish to receive the word talk series on Romans if you want to write and receive Word Talk, we'll give you some further information about that. My special guest today is Carol Drew. Welcome to our program, Carol. You're a photographer. That's right, yeah. You've won many prizes. Yeah, quite a few. How many medals and prizes do you think over the years? Uh, perhaps about 20 medals, um, numerous other awards. 20 medals and numerous other awards. I'll be back because there's a very special message in her photography. But right now, here from Queensland is the lovely Elaine Abrahams as she sings In His Love. <laughs> Well, as I was telling you, I get many letters. Uh, in fact, over a year, I worked out one time that we received more than 50,000 letters one way and another at Wesley Mission, and not all of them are complimentary like these dear people I just read. I remember getting a letter from a man who said, I can't stand your fat face, he said. I watch you every week and I wonder why it is that you smile so much. Why is it, he said, Christians smile so much? Don't they ever have any troubles? And then in one tremendous sentence, he says, you seem to have a secret answer of which the rest of us are totally unaware. 
And I've kept that uh, letter because I really appreciated what he had to say. True, I do have a fat face. True, I do smile a lot. And it's true the Christians have an answer, a secret answer, about the things for which the rest of the world is unaware. Let me explain that. I've been following through Paul's letter to the Romans week by week with you. And we've come now to the eighth chapter. And as we've been in the eighth chapter, Paul has been talking about the true nature of faith and about how we should live our lives committed to God. And he comes to the last verses, verses 28 through to 30. And there he sums up something very beautiful. Let me read it to you. And we know that in all things, now even rotten things, all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. Now, in those verses, there are two things that Paul is saying. And the first one is this, that God works all things for good for those that love him. In other words, there's nothing that happens in your life that is outside of God's ability to take and turn it into some good. Now, maybe the tragedy strikes. It may be that suffering occurs. It may be death comes. But even tragedy and death and suffering can be used to his glory. We have just over Easter been thinking about the cross and about the suffering of Jesus upon the cross and about his death and burial. And I mean, it was dreadful, the most wonderful life ever lived, just taken and crushed upon that cross and buried in the ground. But out of the tomb, beyond the rock and the seal and the guard and the watch, God brought resurrection life. In a very similar fashion, there is nothing that happens to you that God can't use for good. Now, generally when we think about this, people say uh, God takes everything and uses everything and makes them work together for your good. Go a bit deeper in your thinking than that. It's not quite as shallow. It's not God uses all things, but rather this, that all things can be made to work together to benefit those that love him. Now that's a deeper understanding, but God works all things, even bad things and tragic things and things that cause us great worry and suffering, things that just wipe the smile off our face. God can take even the most terrible things and use it for your good. Sometimes good things come out of bad events. And that is why Christians, even with fat faces, tend to smile a lot because they do have a secret answer of which the rest of the world is unaware. Namely, that no matter what tragedy strikes, what suffering occurs, what sadness comes, God can work those things in his plan and use it for his good. I was in Turkey last year and I was watching the carpet makers and as I was looking, I just wondered these people making carpets by hand, beautiful carpets, silk carpets, 120 knots to every inch. And as they were making these, I was trying to work out, oh, it was so difficult to work out a pattern, but the girls and the women working along the carpets just kept working away and putting in the knots. And I looked at it and I said to one of my Turkish friends, I don't understand the pattern. And they said, ah, you are looking from the wrong side. And so I had to go round and then look at it from the other side. And then I could see the pattern beautifully, beautiful pattern. Sometimes when things happen in this life, we're on the wrong side of them. We can only see the knots and the anguish and the difficulty, the suffering and the hardship. But God works all things. And there comes a time when we get round the other side and we see how everything is part of his beautiful.